This is the 2014-2015 Chalk It Up Planner. I'm going to take you on a little tour so you can see what it's all about. Now I've chosen to bind this particular planner in a three ring binder. I just picked this up at the local discount store. It was $2, but I thought the inside was so cute. That's really what sold me on the planner. And then as you saw the front, I just monogrammed with, with a Sharpie my first initial just to make it a little more personalized. So this first page is in case you ever lose your your planner, which I hope you never do, but if you do, there's room for contact information so that it can be returned to you safely. Now, the way I've set up my planner is having the monthly pages first. You can obviously choose to set up the planner any way you wish. You'll be able to print those pages. You decide the order. So it's really nice. You can customize it to fit your needs. But I choose the monthly calendars first, and it's just a good overview for me to see what's going on for the month. So I record school holidays, and we've got trick or trunk going on this month, any appointments that we may have, things that are out of the ordinary, not your everyday soccer practice or things like that. That can, for me, kind of clutter up the view so I can't really tell what appointments that we need to make sure we um, schedule in for our weekly view. So that's how I use my monthly planner. Then I move to the daily planner. And this is where I record a lot of the details like errands or soccer practice or track practice, those types of things. And normally the routine that I have is on Sunday nights, I'll look at the monthly calendar and see what things need to be penciled in for the week. So on this week, you can see I just have a few errands to run, like library books, and um, we've got a dinner party to go to one night. Um, just little reminders of things that I need to do. I'm taking snacks for Brett's class, and Jack has a school project due. So I keep track of those daily items here. And then these are more daily pages. And I usually don't fill those out until after I've looked at the monthly calendar. Again, I've got my next monthly calendar here. So you've seen how I use the calendar pages. Let me move now to the financial section. So this is an entire section designed to keep you on track with your finances. You'll see the first document I have is the debt tracker. If you're familiar with Dave Ramsey, you know how he suggests that you keep track of a list of things that you owe, and then it's nice to be able to watch the balance dwindle month by month. So this is a, a debt tracker. You can keep up with what items you owe, the amount you owe, the due date, what payment you made, and the remaining balance. You can also keep track of that monthly dashboard. It's just a nice way to look and record your goals. This is one of my favorite pages and I use it a lot as a worksheet. So this is a monthly budget and you can write out the things that you know you'll be spending and then the things that vary from month to month. But it's also a great tool because if you know in October you'll buy Christmas outfits or Christmas pictures, then you can kind of plan ahead and see that all in one place. The bill planner is another thing that I use quite often. Um, you can use this worksheet several different ways as well. You can list the bills here. And then what I like to do is record once I receive the bill in the mail, I record the date it's due. And then once I pay it, I'll add a check mark. But if it's something that is on the same date every month, you might not need to record the date. You can just write a check mark when it's paid. So you can decide how to use those that best fit into your schedule. The next section is the health tracker. So I like to keep a, um, a schedule or a record of the ways that I'm eating or the things that I'm eating or the exercise that I squeeze in my schedule. And this is just a nice way to do it. It's a weekly schedule. You can see here, I like to spin. So I did that for 45 minutes. And then also keep track of your water intake every day. And then you can record what you ate. So you can tell I'm a Louisiana girl, I like my gumbo. But these are the things that I ate and keep track of snacks and it just helps you keep an eye on what's going on. Then I like to keep on the opposite page my menu. So this is where I usually plan what we're gonna have for su supper for the week. Um, I usually date it, keep our shopping list here, and then I can just at a glance remember if I'm in the middle of the day and running errands and 
getting hungry. I think, hey, what's for supper? And I have my planner with me. I can just tell what we're, what we're gonna have at a glance. So I like to keep that there. Then I have a notes section, and then that's my next week of health planner. So this is the birthdays and anniversary section of the planner. It's a perpetual calendar, so you can take it from year to year. And you can always tell at a glance, big view, and I like that, so I know what's coming up next. The next section is the blog planner. So all of you bloggers out there, you know it's difficult to keep track of all the things you're posting on social media and and your blog and it's just a lot to keep up with this really keeps me organized so this is the monthly view and again I use it much the same way I use my monthly calendar I'll jot down maybe a topic I'd like to blog about and you also have your social media icons here so you can write when they're scheduled or pub or when your social media has been scheduled or published and same with your blog so I usually jot down an overall view on my monthly calendar and then when I have that, I move to my daily, I'm sorry, weekly blog planner. And this is a more detailed view. So if I've written, you know, printing frequently asked questions on my monthly, then I can go here and include more detail so I know what else is going on. You can record keywords, again, your social media, any promotions that you've got going on, the date that you plan to, do the promotion and your social media icons. It just helps me, you know, see what's going on on a weekly basis. And so normally I do the same thing on Sundays. I take the monthly calendar and look at my weekly calendar, and then I take the weekly calendar and work from that on a daily basis. So let's go back and look at more of the blog section. You have a, a schedule for guest posts. Um, if you're a guest poster or if you have people who post on your own blog. A nice calendar to keep up with that. And then there's my weekly blog. You also have a place to record your stats and analytics, and it's for an entire year. So this is a really great piece of paper to have when you're preparing your media kits or when you're updating your media kits. You can just go and look at the latest month and see what your numbers are and plug those in. Also, keeping up with affiliate programs and sponsors. If you have paid sponsors or advertisements on your website, this is a great way to keep up with that. So the next section we'll cover is the direct sales section of the planner. This is for all you Zija or Pampered Chef girls out there, and I love you gals. You keep me stocked and you keep my social calendar full, so I have a special place in my heart for you girls. But this helps you, especially if you have a team, but even if you don't have a team, just to keep up with your goals and figure out where you're going and what you'd like to do, and it makes it so much easier to meet those goals when you know. So you have your team focus here, you have some numbers that you'd like to see, you've got your monthly goals, again, goals, you've got your monthly team focus, so Figure out when you'll have a team meeting and the topics you'll need to discuss, your top sellers, your top recruiters. When you have events, you can record the event, the hostess, contact information, the guests, and whether or not they were leads, and when you can contact them, who you sent the door prize to. Just really helps you follow up with all the things that you, you say you'll follow up on. Then here's a weekly team focus, so you can keep up with that from week to week. Then your contact page, if you're at an event and need to record a contact, then you have all that right here with you. You can just put all that information in. It's really nice and personable if you can remember children's names or husband's names or send things, special notes out for birthdays. Same thing with new consultants. You wanna keep up with all that personal information as well as when you've sent training emails or follow-ups and goals that you might have set up initially until the, the recruit is ready to go out on her own. And then I keep menu plans again at the back so I can just move those to the front. I like to keep one in the front so I kind of know what's going on. And then plenty of notes pages. I print usually 20 at a time. I like to have those in my planner so that I can record 
just random thoughts that I have throughout the day or random to do's. And then I take my notes that I've written throughout the week. And on Sunday, I transfer those to the weekly or daily sections of my planner. So I hope I answered any questions you might have regarding the planners. But if you have another question, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Love to hear what you think about it. And um, as you know, I'm sure you do, when you sign up for my email, get a free monthly planner. So make sure you do that. There are also other freebies that come out with that email. Hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.